this day, Margaret, Marjorie, Elizabeth, and Jane. And representing the Etzel family, I'd like to call upon Elizabeth to uh, have a little speech. and farm families become fewer. It's heartening to see that community spirit is alive and well in Woodworth. Here we are in the 21st century, gathered on the shore of our little prairie lake to honor and celebrate the spirit of community and sharing that began in the 19th century. The Wright family first farmed this border in the 1980s. It was later purchased by Henry Etzel and then Will to his brother Earl in the 1950s. During all these years, the Wright and the Etzel families kept this lake open for the use and enjoyment of all. This day would not have been possible had it not been for the dedication and hard work of the Salt Lake Committee and all the volunteers who work so hard to make the lake look as it does today. My sisters and I would like to offer a heartfelt thank you to the committee members. The work that you and your spouses have done to ensure that this lakefront remains open is truly inspirational to all. These people really deserve a round of applause. So at this time, <laughs> so at this time, I would like to uh, un to recognize these people. And if you can stand as they call your name, or wave if you want, and then we'll all give you a hand at the end. Orville Bailey, Tannis Gardner, Heather Hunter, Duncan McKinnon, Brent Gardner, Stan Rampton, Gordon Quinn, Claude Tolton, Arnold Bailey, and last but not least, my cousin John Least. of the labor and donated a lot of the materials used in this project. Many thanks to Spark Sand and Gravel who donated and delivered the sand for the beach. I'd like to acknowledge the late Frank Coulter who, who brought the rock from the Leask Farm. A special thanks to Brent Chalmers who cemented the stone into place. I am sure there are many more people that I don't know but who probably did a lot of work on this lake project as well. Thank you very much. Okay. Salt Lake was special to mom and dad. During their lifetime, they made sure it was accessible to all. Swimmers, boaters, water skiers, and berry pickers. Our parents always wanted everyone to have fun at the lake. Over the years, they built a dock, salvaged from our old front step, a diving tower made out of poplar poles, and a raft floating on barrels. They also hauled over an old granary for use as a change house. The best thing Dad ever built for the lake was the little blue and white boat. Dad, Jean, and I spent many winter evenings 
working on its construction. It was a great day when we were finally able to launch the boat. My sisters and I and the Etzel grandchildren used this boat for many years to come. The grandchildren benefited from the wet years. Their grandparents were great about taking them to the lake. Often the grandchildren, together with mom and the dog, would climb into the old 52 Merck truck and dad would drive them to the lake. With mom sitting on her favorite rock, acting as lifeguard, the kids would have a swim. Often they would bake potatoes on the beach. The older grandchildren remember these times fondly. At this time, I'd like to read a few verses from a poem written by a lady who I'm sure many of you knew. She lived just across the Arrow Hills, which you see to the east. Her name was Anne Forrest. The poem is called The Hills of Home. This poem expresses the love we all share for our prairie homes. There are memories that I recall as through this world I roam. A sweet contentment fills me when I see the hills of home. They roll on, never ending, as far as you can see. And every hill and hummock seems like a friend to me. It was there I spent my childhood on those blessed hills of home, wandering around, exploring every crocus dotted dome. They loom up so mysteriously in shapes I know so well. Oops. And as those hills could only talk, what stories they could tell. They tell of skiing parties and of hiking in the fall, but a hilltop in the springtime is the nicest time of all. Whenever your heart is troubled and you think that no one cares, just hunt yourself a hilltop and do your thinking there. Pretty soon, you'll realize that the future holds no fear. You'll know that in your trouble, God is always near. Yes, folks talk of other countries and lands across the foam, but I wouldn't take a million for those blessed hills of home. Salt Lake. Sometimes a tiny pool of water surrounded by acres of white alkaline salts. Sometimes a prairie pond. Sometimes a lake. But always a gathering place for friends and neighbors of this community. We hope the community will enjoy this lake for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess at this time I'd like to uh, ask the four Epsil girls to uh, come up and meet me at the Cairn for the unveiling. <laughs> <laughs> 